Hi everyone, welcome to Rose Hip Needs podcast. This is episode 100. Welcome very, very much to all of you. My name is Hannah and I'm recording this knitting podcast from Northern Tasmania in Australia. Welcome back. If you have watched any of my previous episodes and very big welcome to you if this is the first time you're checking out the podcast. Today is a little bit different because I, I thought it should be a little bit different when it's episode 100. And uh, I'm outside today in my garden because I am sort of um, babysitting two little chicks that are out here on, on the grass next to me. We have, since my last podcast, um, we've been given two orphan little chicks that we are looking after and they've been staying inside um, until they're big enough to be outside and not too cold. Uh, but we take them outside um, during the day to have a bit of a wander around and having a bit of a forage and doing what chicks do. So I thought I'd record outside today and I can look after the little chicks at the same time. So they're right here next to me. <laughs> so um, a bit different. I hope it's not going to be too windy and that the sound will be okay. I'm sort of sitting in the shade because um, the sun would just would be too strong for my eyes and it's, I can already feel like it's a little bit light. Uh, sun here in Tasmania is just really really um, intense and now getting to the warmer months of the year um, yes the sun is, is quite um, intense <laughs> so I'm here in the shade and I hope that will be okay it's quite hot um, but we'll see how we go so it's episode 100 and this is my mostly knitting podcast. I am living in northern Tasmania with my husband and our two daughters. I'm a Swedish expat but I have lived in Australia for about 15 years I think. I am not really counting anymore. Um, since my last episode uh, it was a school holidays I think last time I recorded and we went for a, a trip down the west coast of Tasmania to a place called Strawn and we did some uh, walks and other sort of adventure things. We went on a old railway um, for a bit of a well, half day trip and um, then on our way back from Strawn, we went to one of the tulip farms in uh, Tasmania. It's on the north west coast, I guess. And um, yes, I'll, I'll insert a few photos and videos of that through, well, in this episode some, somewhere. The west coast is it's quite special. It's quite a wild, um, low population area. It has a lot of rainforest and just, it's a very beautiful place. It is a bit of a drive and there's not really much else than nature which is wonderful but it's not a place you sort of pass on the way to somewhere else or um, not a place to go if you want shops or you know anything it's going um, yes into the wilderness but not not that dramatic but um, you don't get there very often really because there's there's not that much there but it's a lovely place to go if you want to be um, exploring rainforest and just be away from from you know, people and crowds. <laughs> anyway, that's um, sort of what I've been up to since last. Went to Strawn and um, up to Table Cape for the tulip farm, and then it was back to work and school. So we're back we're back in term four now of of this year. So not long left now of the school year um, okay yeah so I guess another two more updates um, first the advent calendars are all done and I've started shipping them out so they'll be um, heading out soon you should be receiving them um, in not too long if you've ordered one and um, I will list my 12 days of Christmas soon. I think I'll just get the advent calendars all out first so that um, it's not too confusing for me. 
And then the other update is the chick update, I guess, our little baby chicks. The little babies that um, I showed video of last time that were new chicks then, they're big, big chicks now. They are um, very happy for very happy, healthy chicks that are growing and looking quite different now. You can definitely see that, that they're uh, going to become um, big chickens um, so that's fun and then we have our two uh, little new ones that we don't really know what they are they are some crossbred type that were just sort of uh, found abandoned by their mum on a big property so we're looking after them and who knows um, what will happen there hopefully they'll be able to um, be outside and um, sort of not look after themselves but be a bit more independent soon but yes, they've survived with us for a week, so hopefully that means that they'll be okay. So we have six chicks now, and hopefully um, maybe two of them will be hens. <laughs> we'll see. But that's um, that's what's going on uh, here. So uh, it's episode 100, and I've looked up a few details, <laughs> some stats that I thought would be quite fun. Um, so I've recorded 100 episodes with this one. I started my first episode I uploaded to YouTube in November, no, in March 2015. I was wearing this cardigan when I recorded my first episode. That's why I thought I'd, I'll put it on again today. Um, and uh, yes. I never wear this anymore. I was very proud to have it done when I had it done back in 2015. It's made out of, uh, made out of the Bendigo Stella, which is a bamboo wool. Um, it was a seam garment. The problem with it is um, that it looks, it's really, um, well, it looks like it's drunk, basically. <laughs> One side is hanging down much lower than the other side. Um, and it's just a bit long in the sleeves. It's just, just yeah, just hanging around the body a bit funny. So I don't really wear it. I should probably um, give it away or use like use the, the yarn for something else. Probably more likely to give it away. But yes, um, I feel like I've come a little bit further um, in the last four years so it's four and a half years since I started my knitting podcast um, and yes a few things have happened the children have grown older and the knitting projects have changed and um, yes but I thought it was fun to just wear this now at the start because that's what I wore first time I recorded now that feels much better this is the garment that I finished for myself um, just recently and I'll talk more about it very soon but first, I wanted to let you know what's happening and what you can expect in this episode. This is basically one of my normal episodes, but I will share with you what I have been working on, what knitting I'm working on and what I have finished. Um, so as normal, hopefully you will be okay out here in the garden with the sound and everything. Hopefully I will not get too hot. Hopefully the sun will be not irritating my eyes too much. <laughs> but I did have, um, I think it was Hannah from um, Hannah of Sheep's Alley, uh, Finnish podcast um, in English. She said um, in one of her comments to my videos that she would like uh, to see me podcast outside. So I thought, okay, we'll do that for episode 100 because I have to babysit the chicks anyway. <laughs> um, so it'll be like a normal episode. I have also received some questions that I thought I'll, I'll talk a bit, um, talk about a bit after I go. Um, through my knitting projects and um, I also have some special deals to celebrate this episode 100 um, I thought I wanted to make I wanted to do something special to celebrate I have had um, the podcast for four and a half years and I have had my business Rosip Island for four years very well in a couple of weeks and um, obviously they're sort of a little bit connected. A podcast is mainly for me to be able to 
uh, talk about things that I love and for me to have some time for me but of course it's a little bit connected to my dyeing business because it's a way for me to I guess promote my business and to show what I I do um, so because of that I thought celebrating the 100th episode I should do have a celebration in my Etsy shop so what I will do um, I have started to put together some packs of yarn or sets or kits they're not kits in the way that they are for specific um, projects what I have done is I have put together um, at least four full 100 skeins of different yarn bases and weight sometimes put together at least four of them and they're going to be one hundred dollars each so 100th episode I thought I want to do something that's 100 so I thought I'll put together um, these packs of skeins um, some in some packs there will be two same colorway some of them are all four different colorways all different yarn bases um, but it's it's a pretty good deal to get the the four skeins for um, $100. dollars i think I'll also include a mini skein in there with most of them. So it's it's a it's a great deal and it's a good way to um, try different bases. So I'll have have those and I will have them up when I post this episode. The other thing I wanted to do was I wanted to do um, free shipping for purchases over one hundred dollars. Um, for a limited time so free domestic postage so what I have done is that I have set up a code that starts on the 31st of October and ends on the 3rd of November and the code is 100 with the numbers and free shipping capital letters 100 free shipping if you put that code in and you have um, items for over $100 in your card that will um, make your shipping cost zero so you can take advantage of that um, and um, yes I think that's a, a good way to um, celebrate the other thing I will do actually that I just thought of now I thought of it before but I forgot to um, prepare for it um, I have a mitten pattern on Ravelry and another way uh, I wanted to sort of give something back to all of you is that I will make this mitten pattern free um, for a limited time so for the same time that I have the free shipping 31st of October until 3rd of November my mitten pattern will be free on Ravelry to download and I will put the code on the screen because I haven't set it up yet so there will be a code on the screen now so if, if you uh, put that code in in Ravelry you will be able to download the pattern mitten pattern for free so I hope you all um, appreciate that I'm trying to give back in a few different ways so that everyone can take advantage of it okay so that's 100 celebrations and um, now I'm really really keen to talk about my knitting what I have been doing so I finished my Flucy 2 this is a pattern that I test knit for Libby Johnson, um, Truly Myrtle, a New Zealand designer. And um, I made this jumper out of a yarn that I purchased at the Bendigo Sheep and Wool Show this year. It's Karoa Fiber. It's a um, natural brown wool, I think it's a crossbreed. Um, from Coro Fibers that they've had spun. It's a light fingering weight and I had three colours. I had this sort of, um, this is, they're all dyed on a coloured, natural colour wool. So this is actually mustard coloured but because it's dyed on a natural light brown wool, it comes out a bit darker, more brown yellow. Uh, it's beautiful. It has both the variation in the natural colour of the wool and it has the variation in the hand dyeing. It's absolutely beautiful. So I used the mustard for the main colour and then the sort of pinky um, burgundy colour here and then a black here. 
This is all a mosaic knitting, which I've, I've found mostly easy, but part of it a bit tricky. This six sack here, I found a bit tricky to get it looking good. Um, yeah, I really like um, the finished item. I really like the look of the actual fabric. Um, the fit is a little bit different to how I've done my jumpers lately. I've gone more for um, shorter and fitted um, garments. This is a little bit more um, loose on me, but um, I really like that too. Um, some days that's you know what you feel more like wearing. Uh, it does have short rows in the neck, still coming down a little bit. Um, yes, yeah, so it was a test knit and I think Libby is planning to release the pattern end of October. So close to when this um, episode will be up on YouTube. Uh, I don't know if she'll make any um, big um, changes to it. It's a great pattern. Um, my gauge was a little bit off and that's why it is... Um, maybe not exactly the shape that um, it's meant to be. <laughs> um, oh, it's a bit weird sitting on the grass. Okay, so that's uh, my Fluxy 2. I'm super happy with it. It's a nice um, lightweight garment and uh, yes, I can wear it now even when it's warm and it's fine. I finished another garment since I last recorded and that is Fuiskofer. A design by Madeleine Lindersam. Did I get that right? Yes, I did. This is a child's jumper. This is a free pattern on the Swedish yarn company Yerbu on their website. Um, I use some very deep stash of Bella Baby, Bella Baby Layette. A yarn that I purchased uh, in Spotlight here in, in Australia. It's the same yarn base as the Sida Baby Bamboo or something I think it's called. It's an 80% bamboo and a 20% merino. And I had some variegated skeins, I had some um, sort of solid colour skeins and I just put them all together in this. I made the largest size that was available in the pattern so that I could use up as much as I could out of my um, yarn. Um, it's meant to have four repeats here or four colours. I only used three. So it's meant to have four contrast colours. I only used three because it ended up being really long anyway. Um, I still have a lot left of my yarn. This is really big for my uh, five-year-old. She'll be six in January. Um, but that's fine because I don't think she'll be wearing it for a while. <laughs> it's too warm now. Uh, so maybe by winter here it will be fine. Or maybe even the following winter. Um, I'm really happy with it. I don't think I would make any larger garment using this yarn because it is it's quite heavy. But it looks really nice. It's very crazy using these skeins in this pattern. But it's fun. And it was a very addictive uh, knit. <laughs> um, because you want to see how the, the colours mix together and you just want to finish your repeat. And yeah, it was um, a really fun knit. And I think I would like to. I would like to do it um, this same um, colour work pattern in a different garment or a different item or um, do the, the same jumper again but with a more woolly woolly yarn and different colours. Yeah, this is crazy but it's definitely just a sort of stash buster getting rid of deep stash projects <laughs> and it worked. The only thing is that I still have a lot left of the, um, all of the colours. So maybe I can find something else to do with that or maybe um, I'll just skip the rest away that I have left. I have to <laughs> make sure it's sitting nicely. Uh, so they are the things that I have finished. And then of course when you finish two large projects you're a bit lost and you 
um, I feel like you can do some new things. Um, I do have a few things that I, I'm working on but I haven't really feel inspired to work on. I have my big blanket, I haven't feel inspired to work on that. Um, I'm doing the mittens. That was for a knit along. The knit along's finished now and I just haven't really worked on those mittens. I haven't had any mitten uh, motivation. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's because it's hot or I don't know if I'll wear them, but no, I haven't felt like knitting on my mittens, so I haven't. Um, so I think the next three things that I have to show you might all be new items. Maybe the first one is not. I um, can't remember what I was doing, but I needed a, um, a basic thing to knit on. So I cast on a pair of socks and I might have started these last time. I have now finished one. These are socks made out of my dandy sock, which is a 75% merino, 25% nylon. It's a yarn um, that's spun at Nundal Woolen Mills in Australia from Australian wool. Um, so that's my hand dyed one in the, I did talk about these last time. This is the um, orange, cup coral colorway and then I use my winter garden colorway um, they are for my five-year-old and I just cast on 48 stitches need I put in a waist yarn for the afterthought heel and then just sort of knit them to her size or a little bit bigger than her size um, they're so quick to knit I've, I did them on nine inch circulars so I have one complete and I have one that I have started on so I, I try to not need well, you know, silly what you sort of the rules you try to make for yourself when it comes to knitting it's just silly really but I try to not knit on these except for when I'm out and about and I need a small project to take with me and um, because they're so quick to finish um, and it's just good to have them ongoing for when I need some small easy knit um, so I've started on the second one what I have done which I am mighty proud over and that um, I'll try to keep momentum on is that I have been weaving in all the ends as I have um, sort of finished a section I haven't cut them off but all these ends are already um, woven in which is just great Yes, I have one sock ready and one started and I'm not in a hurry to finish them. I'm really happy with the yarn. I'm not, I've never been an orange person or liking orange, but I'm really into the oranges at the moment. And especially with socks. It's really fun. So I have um, been working a little bit on those. And then I... Um, got um, inspired by a post by Susan B. Anderson. She had a new pattern out and she posted it on Instagram and I just fell for it and there was, you know, like there often is, a discount code for the first few days of the release or something like that. And the pattern was for Elephant and Mouse, I think it's called. And I just thought it was so cute and I thought it would be perfect. Christmas present. I don't need a lot of toys. My kids have enough soft toys, but this pattern was just so cute and I thought it would be fun fun to make. And I think, you know, if I can make a handmade Christmas present, that's really nice. So I cast it on. I decided to use one of my hand dyed skeins from my shop. So I took it out of the shop. This is uh, my new merino base, which is an untreated um, sustainable merino from Australia so it has the new merino brand branding um, it's a beautiful round yarn it's what I made my love note in um, I really love this yarn it hasn't been very popular in my shop I don't know if it's because I haven't had many colorways um, but I really like this. I know that we have uh, a really good untreated 
um, yarn that's from right here in Tasmania, the white gum wool. The white gum wool is quite a light fingering and it's loosely spun. This one is uh, much tighter spun and is a nice round plump fingering weight yarn. So this was my onyx colorway and I have started making a body of an elephant. <laughs> um, yes, and I haven't knit on it for a while. Sorry, I have to try to sit up. Um, I haven't knit on it for a while because I need to get some stuffing and I have polyfill, but I felt like it was a little bit the wrong thing to put plastic filling into this beautiful 100% untreated um, merino. Um, so I might find an alternative and use that for stuffing. Same when it comes to safety eyes. I don't think I'll put plastic safety eyes on it. I think I'll embroider some eyes on it. You can see it has placement for legs, placement for arms, and this is where the trunk will go. So I've been working a bit on that, um, but it's been on hold because I have to um, yeah, get some supplies and make some decisions about that. But that's been a fun and different knit, different to what I, I normally do. Uh, and then I wanted to start on a new garment for myself. I now have quite a few sweater quantities um, that I have sort of bookmarked for specific um, jumpers. So I now can basically go have a look in my queue in Ravelry and choose which of the ones that I've queued that I have yarn for. Um, I can just go and choose and go to my stash and grab what I need and cast on the jumper. Um, but I still had to decide which one of them <laughs> I wanted to cast on next. Um, so I think I showed you last time I had a new magazine that I um, purchased and the knitter and I wanted to make this garment which is a short sleeve um, colour work tee and the reason that I sort of um, was interested in making this is because I had three skeins of Cold Girl Collective tweed yarn and I knew that they would be enough to make a um, jumper for me but I wasn't sure how to combine the three different colours in a good way I didn't really want to do a block um, of blocks of colours in the jumper so I've been thinking for a long time what to do with these skeins and now I decided that it was the time to use them so what I did was that I did a colour work shard for one of the shards that are in in this and I could see that no that was not going to work the the colors are so beautiful on their own but because of the tonal variations in there they're mixing up too much and you can't see the color work so then in my swatch is it swatching around in my swatch I also did some striping to see how the colors mix together like that and I was going to do just a um, top down jumper and stripe the colors. I had a look in my library to see which um, pattern I could use for this um, jumper I wanted to make with my three skeins of the tweed and then I found Fenmont which is an expression fiber arts pattern um, and I had it, I owned it in my library because it had been I think free for a while I mean I know it was I know I didn't pay for it I know it was free but I can't remember the reason why it was free it was just a limited time or if I got a coup, like a code for it or something I don't know but I had it in my library and it looks like in the pattern they've used a sort of tweedy yarn and three colors and it's top down and it has um, a textured pattern and a fade and I've never really been interested in doing a fade because I think it's really hard to do it um, where it actually fades and you don't see the transition but I thought I'll, I'll just go for it I'll just do it everyone should own a 
faded garment, shouldn't they? Or a garment with a fade. <laughs> so I cast it on. I've started with the High Tea colourway. It's a provisional cast on for the neck. So I've just, like with the, um, I think it's the Yennefer Steingast pattern, Vintersul, the provisional cast on is just that you knit with a different uh, contrasting waist yarn for a few rows and then you just start knitting with your main colour and then you can just knit, like cut that off and pick up the stitches. Anyway, I started with the high tea colourway, the grey, and I've just started fading into the pink one, which I think it's called the girl, girly colourway maybe. And I'm not 100% sure about this. You can definitely see how I've striped it there. I'm doing the fading a little bit different to what the pattern says. The pattern says, I think two rows of each twice, but I started doing just the one row of the one that I'm fading into, two rows of the main one, and then sort of two of each, and then swapping. Yeah, maybe it's not making any sense, but yes, I'm mean, fully into the pink now, and I have, I think, an inch to go, and then I'll separate for the sleeves. So yes, I've been working a bit on that. I'm working on 2.5 millimeter needles. I think the gauge is about 20 stitches per 10 centimeters, so it's quite a loose, gauge and it will be quite drapey and nice. I'm just loving the combination of this textured pattern and the tweed. I think it's really really nice. So we'll see how it, how it goes. I might not get a beautiful um, sort of seamless fade but I think it will still be a very beautiful garment and hopefully a sort of lightweight like this one so I can wear it through the year on the you know, chilly evening. <laughs> So yes, I am, I'll show you the colours I'm using. So this is the one I started with, then I, now I'm going into this, and then the last one is going to be that one. So they're not sort of a gradient at all, they're very different colours, but I'm hoping they will fade okay and it won't look too much like blocks of different colour. But that's, um, that's the knitting I have um, to share with you. So now I thought we'd um, do a little bit of a trip down memory lane or this is a part of the questions that I have received. I should probably move a bit out of the funny shadows on my face. Um, so as I said at the start of the episode, I have been recording for four and a half years and in the four and a half years since I started the podcast, I have completed 207 projects. Can that be right? Anyway, that's that's what I think. It's a few years, four and a half years. Um, and one of the questions I received was, um, since I started podcasting, which which one is the which knitted item have I used the most um, and are there any ones that I have not used at all so um, as I started to say that this garment this cardigan it's called um, Olive Basket by Amy Miller I'm not using that at all for a while I had it just as a home cardi but it's just irritating now because the sleeves just hang down too much so that's one I'm not using but I have taken out from my wardrobe a few favorites and um, and I thought I'll try to do them in order if I can I have a big uh, laundry basket here of stuff I'll see if I can find things in the right order. So the first one that have, I have used a lot that I completed in 2015 is my Autumn Morning Shawl by Holly Dapp. Oh, it's very bad light now. Um, sorry, have to 
look after the chicks, so we'll stay here. Um, so this is uh, Autumn Morning by Holodap, and it's great. I This is a yarn from Bendigo Woolen Mills, and the, the variegated one is one that I dyed. So it would have been one of my first dyeing um, jobs. <laughs> um, I really love it because of the shape and because it is quite a light coloured shawl it's just really easy to wear with a lot of things so I still wear this a lot um, another shawl that I finished in 2015 is my tulips field shawl by Carolyn Sawa who was Sasu Yarns she does not die anymore she had a podcast and she hasn't sort of podcasted for a while I um, use some random skeins in my stash I think two of them are uh, hand dyed leftovers um, I just it's very um, lightweight smooth and nice and I really like these um, textured stitches so I like that a lot one thing I did in 2015 was an antler cardigan for my um, well it was for my eldest daughter back then um, antler cardigan by Tin Canyons I made this in Yo Sharp DK wool in a classic DK I think and this as you can see is being worn a lot I don't think my eldest daughter wore it many times but my daughter my youngest daughter now is five she wants to wear this every day um, and I really, I really need to get rid of all this horrible looking clean stuff. But yes, she loves it. I don't know if it has to do with the buttons or if it's because she knows that I made it. <laughs> but it's getting a lot of wear. And I'm even now thinking that I should make another antler cardigan for her. So that's been used a lot. 2016, I knit quite a few Quinn hats. Quinn is a pattern by Woolly Wormhead and this is only one of the ones that I have made. These are great. Um, they re sit really nicely on the head and they cover the ears and yeah they're just fun. You can use different contrasting things for the garter stitch um, edge uh, brim and uh, yeah, easy to knit and the fun and yes they've been really popular with my kids and then I wonder if the antler cardigan was a test knit for tin can knits I have done a lot of test knits for tin can knits which has been really good for my kids they're getting a lot of nice jumpers out of it another one I did was the bumble sweater that was a test knit for tin can knits and I absolutely really really <laughs> love this one it has been worn a bit it's still a little bit big for my five-year-old um, it's just so much fun and this again was um, this is a, one of my first hand dyed yarns together with a tweed yarn from Yo Sharp um, yep so I really really like that one it has been worn a bit and then oh I didn't bring that out maybe I can put a photo in um, the veranda shawl by Meg Gadsby um, it's a really huge shawl that I made in some white gum wool fingering weight yarn that I dyed also some of my first dyeing and I don't wear it so much now but I did use it a lot because it was so big that it was like a blanket for my children when they were little um, and it's so soft and nice um, but I have it in my box of samples at the moment so that's why uh, I didn't get it when I was going through my wardrobe um, but that is just a really nice big shawls I did used to do a lot of children's items and a lot of shawls and that sort of shifted now more to garments for myself and socks um, and then in 2017 one of my favorite makes was the brioche shawl I think it's 90 degrees I think this is a pattern by Deanne Ramsey, Adaday Designs, and this is some of my hand dyed that I dyed for the, f I think it was for the first Bendigo Sheep and Wool show I went to. 
and that was really fun to do something completely different and it's really lovely to wear so I still wear that and then a yarn that I bought at the first I think it was the first Bendigo Shipping Wash I went to I bought some DK weight in a sparkle base and from it I made a pair of leg warmers for my daughter she was doing ballet at the time, I think, so I made them for that. And turns out she's not a ballet type of girl. She's now doing karate. So <laughs> she now, on her way to karate, wears her sparkly pink leg warmers under her karate uniform. Um, so they're still getting used. And they're lots of fun. It was really fun to have, like, this was a typical souvenir skein from a special event. Um, and it you know, was made into something fun and then another going through this, I? this is another test knit for Tin Can Knits this is the Dog Star Jumper this is also made out of the DK weight um, Yo Sharp Classic Wool and actually the, pink, the purple one here is the leftovers from, from this one and that's just really great and my daughter who is otherwise quite sensitive to the the woolly itchy stuff she really likes to wear this one still so that's a nice one i would definitely make this again if i didn't have a lot of other color work jumpers um uh, queued up that i have patterns for to do before and then another test knit that i did in 2000 17 was the Fern Shaw Shawl by Shara Lambert and this was my first time doing brioche and I used a special yellow skeins from Craftfulness Sandra and then a skein that I got from Bendigo Sheep and Wool Show the blue and red um, I love this brioche is such a nice um, fabric squishy beautiful so I wear this a lot and the colours are just so great and then another thing I made in 2017 that has got a lot of wear still but also looks pretty awful <laughs> is the flax jumper uh, by Tin Can uh, which I made out of some recycled wool from Bendigo Woolen Mills I wonder if I should shift now this just feels like I'm funny shadows um, I'm wearing this a lot um, but only at home it's not looking so great anymore but it's it's a perfect garment and I think I should use this pattern again for making just a basic basic jumper so that takes us to 2018 last year I'll just move backwards a bit um, and last year let's see I made this raindrops top that I made short sleeve it's also tin can it's pattern and I used some of my hand dyed delicious sock yarn I think it is in the Louisa's wedding colorway and I used that much more than I thought I would I used it with a um, thin long sleeve blue cardigan And what else did I make last year? Oh, the jumper that my daughter painted a picture of and I dyed up the wool for it to match her painting. This is the Worsted um, Sock Arms Jumper by Tellabine Knits. Stephanie Lotchman. That's getting a lot of use for my daughter. Unfortunately, she'll be growing out of it soon. I have to make a new one maybe. And I made the Crazy Heart, which I use a lot. Most of my jumpers I use a lot. Um, oh, here's a little chick. Um, it's only that first one that I wore on my first episode that I don't really wear. And the Praline Cardigan. Um, but I use this a lot. It's also the Bendigo Woolen Mills Stella. We use that a lot. And that takes us to this year and what I have uh, knit this year that I really really love is my Starfall jumper by Jennifer Steingas it's made out of Rauma wool from Norway 
and I wear that a lot. I won't be wearing it now for a while, it's just too hot. And I love the love note that I made. You see my hand dyed yarn, the um, new merino base and my um, silk mohair blend. I really, really want to make more of these, both for me and for my kids. But talking about this one that I really, really love, it's also one of the items that I'm not really getting worn, is the other love note that I made, that I made as part of the test knit for my daughter, which is beautiful. I made it out of a Holst um, Garn Coast, which is a wool cotton, but I held it together with a mohair that was fine, but it's not a silk mohair soft, it's just, it's a little bit too itchy for my daughter unfortunately. It wouldn't be too itchy for me, I would be fine with it, but my daughter thinks it's too itchy, so maybe when my youngest has um, had a few years of growing into it, she'll be wearing it because she's not as sensitive. And then the last thing for this year that I'm really happy with and that I wear a lot are my hand spun socks, because really there's nothing greater than a pair of socks that you made from, you know, just wool in a bag <laughs> yeah um, that's those so I've mentioned a few things that are not really getting anywhere my star um, praline cardigan by Gudrun Johnson is another one it was the first garment that I completed after the, the olive basket one um, it took me probably two years to finish it and I finished it in time to go to a Bendigo Sheep and Wool show I think and I wore it then and I just I never wear it it just does have a very funny fit it's too wide I think and the buttons are not looking nice so that's never getting worn unfortunately um, another thing that I still haven't even woven in the ends on is my um, Hotel of Bees shawl this is never going to get used. Um, I dyed this yarn, it's a um, Bendigo Woolen Mills Classic 5 ply and it's, it's just not a very nice feeling yarn. I've used the Classic for garments and stuff but in the crochet it's just not great. So I don't know what I'll be doing with that. Probably not much. Oh, and then I can show you the, the mittens that I've made. Um, this is the, the pattern that I'll, I'll put the code here again for the downloading the pattern for these Lund mittens um, for free um, during the 31st of October until the 3rd of November. So I'm very happy with those two, but I'm not wearing mittens a lot. It's just not the climate for it here, I guess. Okay, so that's that's a long line of, of knitwear, I guess. Let's see, I had some more questions. Um, favorite knit designers? Well, obviously tin can knits. <laughs> I, I really like the patterns and I think, you know, from working with them, test knitting, I think they're lovely people. So definitely them. I also have been enjoying Jennifer Steingar's patterns. Um, Stephanie Lotman. I think my favourite designers are mostly the ones that I test for because I'm quite happy to to do that. Uh, crochet designer at a day design, um, Deanne Ramsey. She has great patterns. Um, Shara Lambert um, has great sock patterns and mid patterns um, that I've used. There's, there's many, there's many, um, but I, I, I guess I would say if I can only choose one, that would probably be tin can mitts. Okay, then we have some more questions more about um, just um, living in Australia and coming from Sweden and, and those things. So I grew up in Sweden and I was I always had craft and um, 
textiles and things around me because that was part of what part of what my mum did and um, in Sweden you learn to knit and crochet or you get to try it and sew at school so I'd tried everything um, and I guess we did a lot of sort of crafty stuff but I was not someone who would crochet or, or knit um, as a hobby at all that was something that I picked up I think during university um, probably I think I need a sock and half a scarf and maybe at high school or during a school holiday or something things that things that never got completed and then and um, during university I was doing an exchange and I was in Nepal and it was the monsoon um, time and it was raining and there was really nothing to do and someone where I stayed had some wool and a crochet hook and I started doing some crochet and then I lived um, on an exchange in Sweden and the, the host mum of the family that I stayed with she was um, a crazy knitter and she gave us some more wool and stuff and I continued and then I think I didn't really do a lot of it but when I moved to Australia after finishing uni um, I didn't really know many people and I didn't have a job I wasn't um, when I finished studying I just had a lot of time and I started sort of exploring new techniques and doing more things and just slowly got hooked I joined a knit group and I found some really lovely friends there and um, yes I was sucked in so during the seven years that I lived in Hobart I would knit during my commute to work and sort of knit as a, a hobby um, and then we moved up north when we had our first daughter and again I was left not really knowing many people because I had a baby at home I didn't sort of go out and do many things so I guess I was sort of knitting a lot for you know baby items and other things and um, then started the podcast a year after that and um, yes it's just continued on I guess um, in uh, Launceston which is the closest town to me up here in northern Tasmania um, there are a few knit groups and we have our local yarn shop they do have some groups and they have some workshops and lessons and stuff and there are some groups that the group that mean that meet up for dinner every once a month there's a group that meets at the library every second week I think and I've, I know people in these groups and I try to get to some of these when I can but unfortunately this um, mostly I, I I'm not available when these groups meet up so um, hopefully I will be able to more one day I do have um, I can't say plans I do have dreams about organizing some something um, um, probably would have to start with just like uh, afternoon tea or a morning tea knitting together um, maybe have a pop-up shop type thing or you know having a retreat would be lovely I would love to organize something like that but it's just there's just always so many other things that need to be be done and dealt with so I never really get a chance to explore those things very much okay um, so I can't like I had a questions about um, my early knitting in Sweden I, I don't really have much to share about that because I did I mean apart from what you do at school I didn't really do much so my knitting is very much um, like I only I think almost only knit from English patterns I haven't really knit a lot from Swedish patterns um, mm. And then I had a question about um, coming to um, Australia if it was what I expected I think um, I was I, I always wanted to come to Australia I'll just check my time I always wanted to come to Australia as um, a teenager 
and when I got an opportunity to do an exchange with my university, which meant that I didn't have to pay any school fees or unit fees for it, um, I grabbed opportunity and I um, came to Australia for a year to, to study. I was doing environmental science at uni and I did some marine science and fisheries type subjects um, at the Newcastle University. So I lived on the central coast in New South Wales for a year. And uh, I guess the lifestyle there was pretty much what I expected of Australia. And then I came down to Tassie to visit a friend here and um, I found it very, very different. And the first time I came here, oh, I can hear a big bird first time I came here um, I didn't actually enjoy it very much I think it was a week of rain and it was cold compared to living on the beach on the uh, central coast um, but then I came back again and I really really enjoyed it I think after a, living a year on the beach um, I was quite happy to be in a place that had more seasons and was more um, close in climate to Sweden where I grew up. The the seasons are not as different as they are in Sweden. It doesn't get as cold, I guess, in winter. Um, I guess one of the things that I did not expect was how different the housing is and um, sort of the standards of, of house and buildings. Um, and that is totally due to that you don't need the same standards of insulation and everything like that that you need in Sweden just basically to survive in the colder winter months. Uh, the first house I lived in um, felt like a Swedish summer house really. It was um, a brick house but didn't really have any insulation. Everything was, the plumbing and everything was really, really old. And I don't think anyone in Sweden would, um, except for a summer house, wouldn't I think even accept living like that which sounds really crazy um, I've adapted and I understand the differences and I have no problem with with those things anymore but yes um, like for anyone who goes to a new place um, first you see the obvious differences and then when you've lived in a place for a while and you know the people there you see those other smaller differences um, but I think it, it, Tassie is definitely different to how I saw Australia when I was growing up um, but not in, in not in a good or a bad way or anything like that I think I find it easier to live here with the climate here and the people here and how things are here compared to um, like living on the east coast of mainland Australia which is more like what you see on on TV and what I think how Swedish people would um, imagine Australia to be like. So the last questions would be relating to Rosie Island, my hand dyeing business and I'll try to remember the questions because I didn't bring them out here. I know that one was which one um, of my yarn bases is my favourite base and what I would um, like mostly to use them for. Oh, I feel like I have to sit right in the bush now. <laughs> i go back here a bit. Um, so one of my favourite bases that I, um, is one that I'm working with now and that is the new Merino. And as I said, I haven't, um, hasn't been a very um, popular base. Um, but I really like it. I really like it because it is all natural and it is a very plump but not um, not a weak yarn. Um, so I really like that and I think it's excellent for garments, excellent for children because even though it's not a treated one, it's not superwash, it feels like it has quite a nice um, twist to it that will make it um, last. So I do really like that one. I do also like, I like both of my sock yarns for socks. Um, the one that I'm using now, the dandy, the dandy sock yarn. Like that, like that. Yeah. I do like the dandy, dandy sock yarn. Um, and I also like the delicious sock. The delicious sock um, feels more delicious, I guess. It feels 
um, it has a, um, a nicer, not a nicer twist, it has a, a higher twist and it, um, it has less of a nylon content in it. So they're different, but I, I like both. I still have to make a garment out of the dandy sock. I think that would be nice to try. Um, then for colour work, um, I really like the white gum wool base. This is um, these are made out of the fingering white gum wool base, and they, it just works really, really well for colour work. But I, I, I really, I like all my bases and I would, would only have bases in my shop that I, I like. So I like both of my sock yarns for socks. I like the new merino for garments um, and I like the white gown wool for colour work. I would like to explore having more bases but at the moment I think I'll streamline it a bit and then um, yeah look Maybe for new. Um, um, I really like yarn um, from Norway and and Finland and other like companies in in, in Scandinavia. But I think I feel like I should try to use what I have local to me and yeah, use what's available here to the best um, ability that they can be used. That's how I'm thinking at the moment. Then the last thing um, is um, what dyes I use. And I use um, a few different dyes. What I mostly use is the gay wool dyes because they are a company, family company, family business that's local to me. So I feel um, it's, it's nice to support them and I like their dyes. Um, I also have some landscape dyes, they're pretty easy to use, um, some earth palette dyes for cold water dyeing and I am about to try um, the other dyes, I can't remember the name, but they're organic ones. Um, so I'm always happy to, to try more. Um, same there, I'm trying to streamline it a bit and I'm trying to dye more from primaries only, so not needing as many dyes, just start from the primaries and make my colours from there. But the different pigments and different um, colours um, are quite nice for speckling yarn. So I have that move a little bit because the sun is getting crazy intense. It's the middle of the day. I have a little bit of time before I have to go and pick up my kids from school. Um, I'm sitting squished in between these bushes here. That chicks are still happy um, under here and um, yeah so I've sh shared with you what I have been working on since last time I've been through four and a half years worth of knitwear that I like and some that are not so successful I've answered a few questions if you have any more questions about anything please let me know and I can always include um, a few uh, in future episodes um, I have shared my celebration of the 100th episode by um, giving back to you through the, um, the deals that are coming up in my Etsy shop, Rose Hip Island, and the discount code for free shipping and the free download um, code for my mitten pattern, the Lund mitten. So um, please, um, if you can or you want to please take advantage of, of those because really I'm doing it um, as a thank you to you and um, as a way to share you know the happiness and how good I feel about um, this podcast and the past four and a half years really I've only had really really good things really good outcomes from the time that I have spent um, making this podcast um, you know, mostly for me but also for you and talking about that I only had positive comments on my last episode when I mentioned that I might turn on the ads on my videos so I've now put in a sort of I don't know what they call it application to turn ads on or yeah to get uh, that's under review at the moment so who knows there might be some ads on my videos shortly we'll see what that leads to um yes 
I think this has been a really long episode. I'm feeling pretty hot at the moment. Here's the, here are the cheeks. Hello. Hello. Let's see if we can say hello. Here they are. Hello. They've been my company when I've been recording today. Yeah. Okay, down you go. Because they don't have a mum, they're very uh, sort of attached and quite happy to have a cuddle. My daughters are absolutely loving them. They're very happy to have pets. Um, so we'll see what happens when they <laughs> grow old. Too big for them to handle. All right, well, I am going to um, take all my stuff back inside. Um, I'll take my time with editing of this podcast because I want it to be released um, closer to when the discount codes and, and things are ready on Etsy on Ra and on Ravelry and I need to put together my $100 deal packs um, as well so um, I'll take my time editing hopefully there will be some nice videos of little chicks maybe little chicks growing up to be bigger chicks and then also some video of um, some of the scenery of Strawn and um, Boat Harbour and Table Cape and the Tulip Farm uh, still I'm still thinking about my Swedish episode. I'll definitely record an episode in Swedish um, because I had uh, some feedback about that that people would in enjoy that so I just have to think a little bit more about it because um, I don't want to have an episode where I just sit and talk about what it feels like to be Swedish in Australia. I, I want to incorporate some knitting and stuff into it as well so it might be sort of a little bit um, a repeat of what I do in the normal episodes. Um, we'll see. Anyway, oh my goodness me. Thank you so much. So, so very, very much for joining me today for episode 100. Out in my garden, hot as ever. Um, looking crazy, funny, hot, um, squinting. Um, yes. But you got an outside episode, it's a bit different. Um, and the chicks are happy, so thank you. Thank you um, for watching and for being with me on my knitting journey. Um, this is all for this episode, so next time I see you, we will have passed this 100 episode great. Um, milestone <laughs> um, I wish for you all to take really good care of yourself happy knitting um, and you know, I'll, I'll see you next time thank you again very very much um, so I'll see you next time until then take care <laughs>